Hi everybody, and uh, yes, it's still New Year's Eve. Welcome back to Simon Outdoors. Now, I said I was going to do videos talking about the tools that I use, and uh, I thought, well, I've got a few jobs on the go doing housework. Um, so, while that's happening, let's crack on with a video. So, uh, I want to talk to you about some knives. Um, I might have briefly gone over them on a previous video when I when we lived at the old house and I was going to start and do videos in the workshop I'd even painted a back wall I was going to put decorate it a bit and do videos from in there so when I'm not out in the woods or camping or somewhere and I'm doing a chatting to you video I've got somewhere to go to rather than like here in the kitchen here you know, see the cooker and stuff but um, yeah, I might I might try and make a space in this garage, but I say make a space it's full of stuff and I've got more stuff to bring over from the mother in laws another day. So, I'll get the camera set up and uh let's have a have a look at some knives. Right. Back again. So the knife I want to talk to you about today is a Mora. Um I've actually got a couple of Moras I want to talk to you about today. Um I've spoken to you about my main knife, the main bushcraft knife that I, I use, Termit Bushcraft, because it's it's sort of got a style that is known to a lot of people. But yes, I've spoken to you about that one on previous videos, uh, when I've actually been out in the woods. I have now found my Norwegian knife, uh, which I like it, and... Um, it's a memories for me because I've had it a long time and then I lost it for a couple of years and found it again. I don't think either that will replace the Spanish Koudman, uh bushcraft knife that I use. Um, I might take it along sometimes and use some work with it but it, it won't replace it because the Koudman one being full tang uh, is a lot more heavy duty and, and I will trust it a lot more than I will the uh, Norwegian little knife, the one that you've probably seen in, in films as well. I might get those two knives out and talk to you about those another day. But today we're going to talk about the Mora 120. Now, you can see there, that's the Mora 120. Something you can probably notice straight away is that I've cut the belt loop off these. Now, it's a very good sharp knife, but the sheath you can see, I'll hold my fingers where the sheath goes in. The sheath is overkill for this knife. It's because they use the same sheath for a few different knives. So, straight out, you can see there's some damage here. This is how I received the knife when I first got it, and also there was surface rust on the blade. So, I can see already, this is the first time I took it out for a while. Yeah, you might go, it could do with a clean, and it, and it probably could. Oh, Got to be careful, I'm looking through my camera here. Yeah, but something I have done since I got the knife, like I say, I, I uh, cleaned the rust off the blade and oiled it. But I did use this the other day for carving the spatula, and then when I brought it home I haven't oiled it. So, yeah, I haven't took the care with it then. Well, something I did do is sand the handle down straight away. I tried to get rid of this damage just here. You can see I tried to get rid of that, but that didn't work because I'd have to go deeper than what this piece is here. Well, I sanded it down and I used um, boiled linseed oil. I had thought about customising the handle by carving into it, but then I just decided to leave it as is. I might change it eventually try and get that there. Eric Frost come on see if I tap the screen that normally works there we go Eric Frost Mora Sweden it just keeps going in and out of focus when I, when I tap the screen but if you buy this knife um, depending where you buy it Oh, hang on a sec, my battery is going to run low. 
Okay, so back on with the recording. I've got 15% battery left and uh, that's about it. I can't charge it up at the minute and I haven't got a spare battery pack as my battery pack had gone missing uh, in the move from the old house. So basically what you're going to need when you buy this knife is one of these. Now you might go, I need a sharpening stone with every knife. Well yes that is true. But the reason why you need one of these when you buy this knife is not because you get it blunt, it comes very very sharp. It's something that happens to this knife that happens to a lot of other people's knives and I'll probably even say I'll guarantee it will happen to you is that the tip will snap off and then I have had to reshape this it, it takes a bit of a drop here and, and curl it back up and bait yeah I've re reshaped the tip of this knife because literally it did snap off probably three nearly four millimeters of this knife snapped off and that's happened to a lot of other people and that, that tip there gets into those fine detailed carvings when you're doing those so while I've got this knife out I'll give it a good clean up I'll get my phone charged up and I'll talk to you about a few more tools but there is the Mora 120 it could do with being made in a better sheath I was thinking maybe I might make a leather one one day with some tooling leather to make a better sheath and even probably hide some of this inside so the blade doesn't stab into the leather but it definitely doesn't need to be this long as you can see there look so there we go the Mora 120 thank you very much for watching Simon Outdoors and I'll see you soon